Hey everybody, it's Sammy Warmhands from the Bat Fanatic Podcast, and Chris asked me to make this video giving you guys a tour of my collection. Check it out. Listen up, Gotham. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hi, puns, it's me, Holly Quinn. This is Batman. This is Robin. Tune into the Bat Fanatic Podcast. The Bat Fanatic Podcast. The Bat Fanatic Podcast. The Bat Fanatic Podcast with Sammy Warmhands. With Sammy Warmhands. Bat Fanatic Podcast. Bat Fanatic Podcast. Although, Sam, you might think about changing the name. <laughs> First of all, a huge shout out. Batman the Statue Collector having me guest starring here. We're going to go take a look at a lot of things. But first, we're going to look at the sketch wall, because that is my baby. Everything on this wall is an original commission, though some of them are photocopies. And the reason for that is that I wound up with a lot of different sizes of commissions, and some of them just did not fit together on the wall. I had a stack of frames, blah, blah, blah. So I made some copies onto blanks. That way, everything's the same size, and everything has its place. Just one perfect grid. So here we go. At the top, the first sketch I ever got was Enrico Marini from The Dark Prince Charming. These first few are copies, a lot on this uh, first row, okay, these early ones. Uh, next, I got Eamon Winkle. This is a Batman he did as a thank you for a Phantasm sketch that I got from him. Next, I have a gift from a listener of the Bat Fanatic podcast. This is a Sharpie sketch from Warren Lau, colored by Alex Sinclair. And uh, next, we have Todd Aaron Smith, the storyboard artist from the animated series. And this was a blue line pencil sketch that from afar just did not stand out on the wall. So I made a copy and just did some half-ass colors myself. So forgive the shoddy work on that, but from a distance, you can actually see it on the wall. Next here, we have Joey Lee Cabral, who did uh, Batman with the, uh, the, the paint flex. I love that style, you know, when you, you cover up your drawing and just flick the brush, he's great. Uh, here I have another one that I, uh, half-ass colored. This is a Tim Shin Sirens piece that I got and again it just did not stand out once I got all these up here like this and so I did a half-ass color. Please do not uh, judge. I did not ruin the original. It's just easier to see this from a distance. Okay now let's get into the good shit. I've got Sean Murphy. This was a remark he did inside one of my hardcovers. I made a copy, did the background removal, and printed it up here so I can look at it every day. Next, we have Mirka and Dolfo and Alex and Claire on the punchline sketch. Uh, this was Emerald City Comic Con 2021. All of these are chronicle chronological order from when I got them. And next, we have from that same show, Sean Murphy and Katana Collins with the little hyena there. And the next year, I added Mateo Scalera with Harley Quinn. And... That same con, Jim Lee appeared, and I was able, through Albert Moy, to get an original pencil and ink sketch on a buck slip. So what I did was I copied that, and then I sent the original off to be uh, fully inked and colored, which I will show you later. Next, I have Joelle Jones on Catwoman. They called this like a deluxe remark. She just did the, uh, the quick inks there, and then I uh, asked if she would fill in some some detail and so we got that color on the face. Uh, next we have John Timms on Damian Wayne. These would be the following Emerald City Comic Con, all of these here. Uh, Ryan Benjamin on Mr. Freeze. Andy Price, Catwoman. Manuel Martinez, Clayface. Wade Von Grawbadger, Batgirl. All of those Emerald City 2022. Next, I have uh, another Tim Shin, Harley Quinn. This is much more expertly colored by himself. You can see that. I uh, love that piece. Here we have Joe Benitez. This is what gave me the idea to copy these things because this Batman uh, Detective 1000 is too thick for my comic book frames. It would not close the back. And I was like, I'll make a copy, frame that. And once I realized I could do that, it uh, inspired the rest. So this next one was probably the first one I did. This is... Uh, Michael Keaton by Mandy War, and this next one here is uh, Bat Collector 81, and uh, it was a, a smaller piece. Both of these are, are copies that I uh, added to blanks. Here is a Tony Daniel. This was an eBay score, and uh, it had a, a, an orange painted background, which um, 
you know, the, the size of it was a nine by 12. I don't have a lot of nine by 12s. So I had to, to photograph it, remove the background and copy onto this. Uh, next we have Duke comic art with the Ezra Keaton hybrid. I love this. Um, the Batgirl is a CGC slab that I photographed and printed a copy. And I'm not totally happy with the color on how this came out, so I'm actually going to redo that. It was one of the first ones that I ever attempted. Uh, this one is just kind of a leftover from the earlier pieces that I had acquired. This is just a canvas print of uh, Nicholson in that iconic I'm melting scene. And we're going to swoop on down here before we get into the other 89 stuff. So here, whoop, I tripped a little bit. Here we have... Steve McNiven on the Bloody Battle Damage Batman, Washington Summer Con 2022, three? I don't know. I'm losing track. And Mitch Garrett's from the same show. They were right next to each other. Uh, this one is uh, Stepan Sejic from Harleen. Uh, it was a big deal for me to get that. That was a mail order from San Diego Comic Con. Next, we have Sean Murphy. A uh, funny story beyond, uh, about that, which uh, we'll get into on our review of Fan Expo Dallas this summer. And going to meet him for uh, the second time and making my third attempt at getting an Asbats. Uh, yeah, we'll get into that later. Next, we have Mark Silvestri on Harley Quinn. That was from Fan Expo Denver, also by mail. Uh, these next three I got at GalaxyCon Austin uh, last fall. This was Miko Soyan from Criminal Sanity. We have Mirka Andolfo again, uh, another blue cover. She liked those. And then Raphael Albuquerque on Batgirl. Uh, this Dan Mora piece was a CGC mail-in private signing event and I chose the Super Bats character that he and Mark Wade created for their current run of World's Finest. Next we have another one, my first proper sketch cover from Enrico Marini. Uh, this was New York Comic Con obtained by my friend Dave from the Bat Fanatic podcast. Next we have Frank Kadar on this uh, Michael Keaton on the yellow cover, the old school Batman number one. Uh, this next one is my first Swamp Thing. This is a Kevin West piece, and I had never heard of him. I found this on eBay and absolutely adored it. It is a 9x12 photocopied. I apologize for the glare here. I'm trying to get around it best I can. Here we go. And the next one is Brian Lacey. This is the best deal I've ever found on a piece. It was $10 on eBay. There was no bids left, and so I punched in on the last few seconds, and I got that baby for the opening bid. Love it. And we're going to move right on down. This is another one. This is from Big Chris, and it's a Harley Quinn 8.5 by 11 piece that I copied onto this blank. Next, this was my Big Grail, okay? I got this original... Sketch cover from Frank Miller, and you can hear more about that on our Megacon review on my channel or subscribe to the Bat Fanatic podcast. Uh, he forgot to sign it, so I took it down to Megacon to have him sign it and got a nice photo with him and got a little, uh, little meet and greet. It was really, really cool. So that's maybe my favorite piece that I own. Uh, next, we have Jason Margos on the Marv that is an homage. I love the negative space here. This was a photocopy, uh, something I picked up on Etsy and uh, copied onto the Frank Miller blank. And next here, we have uh, J.D. Carrera on the Wendy panel recreation, which I absolutely love. And those were all by mail. These next ones are from this year, January, Fan Expo Portland. I was able to get John Epson Glapian to do Death of a Family Joker, one of my favorites. I visited Mitch Garrett's again, who had again done this uh, Riddler. He was the year, not year one, uh, One Bad Day Riddler artist. And uh, I was also a, a fan of one of his uh, variants for Rorschach, so I had him do a Rorschach there. Uh, next, we have uh, Jason Metcalf on Supergirl. Great deal on the uh, full color cover there uh all these originals no copies nothing like that um the the wendy is a copy of a cgc uh, so it is a blank cover um as is this one i got this slab for a steal on ebay it's just the jim lee sharpie sketch uh signed 
by Scott and Alex. I'm actually sending this to WonderCon to have Alex color it. Uh, next here we have Eric Fidel on the Bat Cat. This is another uh, artist that I found on Etsy. I love this. It was an awesome, awesome deal. And uh, yeah, maybe my first two figure full color piece. And uh, yeah, really happy with it. Uh, next we have here, um, I'm blanking on his first name all of a sudden. Um, Gunderson is uh, an amazing artist. I love the way he does faces. Uh, particularly female faces, and um, I really intend to get another one from him soon. This was an Etsy find for very, very cheap, and uh, copied that onto a Birds of Prey cover, because uh, it's my first canary. I wanted her to go with the, the theme there. And now we're getting into Megacon Orlando, which was February this year, last month. And first we have Bill Morrison with the Bartman. Next we have Marissa Pope with the Vintage Catwoman. And next we have Tony Daniel with Bane. All of these original sketch covers, no copies involved. Okay, um, how do I want to do this? That is the last of the sketch covers on this wall, but I've had to make room and uh, put them elsewhere. I think what I want to do first is let's move down one more time. A couple more original pieces. This is uh, my biggest ones, okay? Uh, and again, I'm Apologize for the glare. Hi, you can see me in there. This is uh, John Toddleton Swamp Thing from 1985. This was an eBay find. It is 11, no, it's 14 by 17. Big boy. And it's on uh, like a, a, a brown butcher paper kind of thing. I love this piece. And then the whole reason I went to Megacon was to get this, uh, uh, to get an original piece from Jason Fabok. He's uh, practically my favorite artist in the game. Uh, him and Lee Bermejo, who I, I commissioned in September for GalaxyCon Austin when he canceled. So uh, eventually I'm going to get the uh, the sketch from that. I'm just waiting for him to have time. But yeah, so this this right here and this right here, those are, are my holy grail pieces. Um, I got matching frames for these also, so they look good on the wall together. Let's zoom out a bit. Here we have a few autographs of all the Batman actors. I've got Michael Keaton, Ben Affleck. These are by size, not chronology. Uh, in fact, down here, I've got the in-person uh, autograph um, photo op, you know, from when I met him and did that. That's Michael Keaton. This is Michael Keaton's movement double. Um, this is, uh, Carl, and if you can zoom in here, Carl Newman, yeah, you can see it there. Uh, he did this for me. Big fan of his work. He did many of the iconic shots in the 89 film. And then also at Galaxy Con Austin, I got to meet Andy Serkis, who was, uh, just brilliant as Alfred. I can't wait to see him in the next Reeves film. So yeah, there's the Ben Affleck. This one was ordered through uh, the Fan Expo website. I believe he did uh, Fan Expo Canada, Toronto, something like that. And they had some inventory on their website. Um, this was, I believe, the first Batman autograph that I ever picked up uh, from a, uh, an autograph seller at Rose City Comic Con. It's a pretty big one too. It's 11 by 14, Christian Bale. And uh, I felt good about this. I've seen other ones on this exact photo. Uh, signature matches that are JSA, you know, Beckett certified. So uh, even though I picked it up from a reseller, I feel good about that one. Um, this one is, uh, it was from Celebrity Authentics in conjunction with Twin Cities Comics uh, out in the Midwest. And uh, it's the Robert Pattinson. I just got this, I don't know, six months ago or something like that. Um, it is uh, the same size, but I couldn't find the exact frame. So it's in a big ass matted frame. Uh, I guess while we're here, I'll show you real quick my bookcase. It's not too big. Um, I'm building up my Absolute Edition and Omnibus collection as I replace my trade paperbacks. Here's the regular shelf. Got a lot of trades. We got some, you know, deluxe hardcovers, the long Halloween, Invincible, Ego, uh, Superman Unchained, things like that. Uh, let's move down here. We got some more trades. Bunch more hardcovers, you know, Deluxe Edition, Sean Murphy, White, White Knight, Wife Knight, yeah. Uh, Dark Prince Charming, I love that oversized hardcover. Uh, my first couple Marvel books, I just started getting into Star Wars books, and uh, we'll talk more about that in a moment. 
Uh, yeah, Damned, Harleen. I love all the Black Label stuff, Criminal Sanity, Killer Smile. If you listen to the podcast, we've reviewed a lot of those. And so, yeah, that's most of it. I've got a couple books in the living room right now, uh, just sitting out on the end table as I read them. And let's go back into sketches. So on the left here, we have Jamie Johnson on Batman, on Batman, and on Batman. He did all three of those for me. A uh, couple, yeah, okay, end of 2021. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And then this Keaton on the right is from Bat Collector 81. Uh, this Catwoman was just a small bonus piece that came with that. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, because uh, his page used to be uh, his, his collection, and it gradually turned into, oh, I'm going to do a sketch here, I'm going to do a sketch there. And uh, now it's pretty much full-blown art page. And I think I might have been the first person to buy one of his original pieces. So really stoked on this. I love the shadows and composition here. Um, continuing with the black and white, these are... Uh, artists that I got from overseas, right? And so these are on A4 sizes. And because they have backgrounds, you know, I just left them as is. I have a small section of these. And to go with them, I have Dave Akins on Danny DeVito Penguin. And then uh, he goes by J. Rowe Illustrations on uh, Instagram. Uh, but uh, I believe the, the Rowe is, is Roberts. And I did this excellent Nicholson piece. Uh, I love these together. Um, it did have uh, white borders on the page, and so I put in kind of a, a, a homemade little uh, black border on the edges there. But yeah, these 9x12s paired well with the A4s. And then down here, this is my third grail piece, this original Bruce Tim. I wanted to have that on display in its full glory and not shrink it down onto a sketch cover just because this is so iconic and again one of her creators it just meant the world to me to have this uh right here we have laura braga this was the second commission i ever got and uh love 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 her style and uh you know the the light color embellishments uh are really cool makes it a unique piece another harley creator here shane glines a character designer for harley quinn the animated series um, this piece was actually in like orange neon pencil and um, it did not fit in the frame. It was off by like a millimeter or something. And so I didn't want to squish it or cut it. I just made a black and white copy because the color copy just, it didn't replicate the colors uh, with that neon. So uh, yeah, got the black and white here. I hope to get that inked and colored at some point, even if it's just the, the copy of it, because uh, I love this and I, I really want it to, to pop out on the wall. Uh, next here I have Mark Huizinga, brilliant artist who uh, primarily worked in digital, and I was uh, uh, really shocked by uh, how much I, I was blown away by the traditional work when I got it in person. And uh, if you see, that is not a shitty mat behind it. It is some of the other 9x12s, like that Kevin West Swamp thing, and uh, I forget what else is in there, but things that I had to make copies of. Um, so, yeah, that is um, the main section. I uh, just bought these 89 vintage posters at GalaxyCon Austin. And we got the regular 24 by 36. And then we got the 6-foot Nicholson, which uh, gets kind of cut off there. My light box is down here where I take my photos. Uh, this one is by, uh, I believe it is Nathan Anderson. It's like N-A-A-R-R-T on Instagram. I love this piece. Just a print, one of the only prints I have left. Uh, this is my Tim Burton autograph. Also picked that up from uh, an autograph seller in Portland. This is my Margot Robbie. That was another Celebrity Authentics Twin Cities comics collaboration from two years ago, I believe. Love this shot. And I have six foot by four foot Trinity posters from the Snyder Cut. And this is what uh, is behind my Detolf for the Hot Toys. So we're going to get into uh, the Hot Toys in a bit. I have some more pieces that are coming in the mail this week, and uh, I will add to that. Right here, I have the in-store DVD displays, the retail displays from Dark Knight Rises and Batman Returns. Returns I picked up on eBay. Rises was from my local store. Oh, and I don't want to skip over six-foot door poster from Batman Returns. That goes all the way down. 
as well as the Dark Knight 3D standee. It's a little bit uh, worn, but that is from 1986. The original, it wasn't even called Dark Knight Returns, just the Dark Knight. And so my hope is to get that one signed by Frank. It's just a little bit delicate to uh, travel with, so I haven't yet. Over here, we have a six foot door poster matching the Batman one, and it is Michelle Pfeiffer. And then we're gonna skip over that for right now. This is the six foot by four foot Henry Cavill. And continuing an original production sketch from Baby Doll, Batman the Animated Series episode. Down here, I have my slabs. So there's that Wendy. There's that Superman, my first Superman. There's Super Bats from Dan Mora and Sean Murphy. You can see how the color on this is much warmer on the banner and on the signature. So I'm gonna try and redo that copy and make it better. Um, I'm gonna move these. I just put them here and there's just really not room as my collection continues developing. As you guys know, it's always a challenge. This was a gift, uh, don't mind the uh, busted foam. This is also uh, my recording studio, so there's uh, drums and gear and amps and stuff everywhere. Yeah, this is this is on a speaker right now. But uh, yeah, this is a canvas print, just came from a store. A friend gifted this to me the other day. I, I've kind of been clearing out this type of thing, but it being Jason Fabok and Three Jokers, I'm like, wow, okay, I guess uh, you have excellent taste or you know me very well. Uh, right over here, We've got a couple more sketches. These are also from Megacon. I have Ivan Reyes, who did Ra's al Ghul, One Bad Day. I have Ryan Otley from Invincible. He did Czarface, which is a rap group uh, spinoff from Wu-Tang. And um, next we have Anthony Marquez on the year one Batman. Love this piece. And Sabine Rich on the full color Harley, as well as Sora Sung on Supergirl. I love her faces and John Boy Myers on Godzilla. Now I've taken down pretty much all of my autographs, but I was gifted this by Eric Lau, a friend of mine, and I got that signed at Megacon. He gave it to me while we were standing in line together. Up here, we have a life-size bust, basically. This is a, like a Ruby's Halloween decoration. It crawls out of the ground, and I thought it'd be cooler if I drilled it into the wall. So he is... Uh, right there staring at me at all times. The Capullo, death of the family Joker. Gross, love it. Here we have the six foot by four foot Ben Affleck from the Snyder Cut. So yeah, I have the whole trinity of those. If I continue running out of space, I may finally sell these or at least uh, the other two, I don't know. But this is uh, overlooking my desk, which also has the Kevin Conroy autograph. I got this from him on an Instagram live that he did with Tara Strong in 2020. No one was doing cons, so they did a, a signing online and uh, you could just uh, buy them in real time and they signed them and never got to meet the man, but I got this and I got a, a little intro for our podcast. So very, very grateful to have some connection to him, but uh, yeah, I really wish I could have met him in person. Over here on the other side of the desk, we've got the uh, Jim Lee, Scott Williams, Alex and Claire finished piece on the buck slip. Uh, if you can tell the matting is uh, that, that bright white, it's just this middle strip. It's the size of a dollar, that's why they call it a buck slip. So yeah, this was uh, my first real big piece. I really, really love it. And um, up here, another artist who passed away before I could meet him. I got this uh, semi-rare promo poster for Catwoman Win in Rome that was uh, signed by Tim Sale. And I just brought it to Jeff Loeb in Portland at Rose City a few months back. And he signed that for me as well. Over here, as I step around my secret lab Dark Knight chair, I've got this panoramic animated series shot that is Simon, Batman the Animated Fan. He does great homages in the style of Bruce Tim. Also over there, past the studio foam, I've got the uh, Francesco Francavia Battenson poster. And now this piece is a little bit covered up by Leo and Christina there, because I haven't quite got rid of all my other interests in this room, but the BVS retail display. 
Okay, friends, here we are, the Hot Toys display as we speak, okay? It's a little bit of a work in progress because I have the backdrops in this other case, which is converting to Star Wars. So soon I need to pull out all the shelves and disconnect the lights and replace these. But I'm going to wait until I have the Star Wars backdrops to do so. For now, let's do a quick rundown here. This is the brand new Mars Toys Bruce Wayne, Mr. W. Really a big fan of this. I sold my DX09 when they announced the uh, new version 2 that's coming out. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. And I have the Alfred, a.k.a. Old Housekeeper, on order to go with him. Down here, these are both the original Hot Toys Nicholson's the regular Joker and the Mime Joker. I know, I think Mars and some other folks have done third-party versions nowadays, but those are the originals. And then this is Oswald. It's Eternal Toys, uh, Crime Boss or something like that. But yeah, a really solid DeVito. Comes with the metal functioning umbrella and these little penguins. I did, by the way, change the bases on these figures because they are really big and I need to consolidate so I can fit more on a shelf this way. Uh, this is a big consolidation, Batman Begins. I know a lot of people weren't a fan of this figure right up front. The uh, Hot Toys Bale, this is the newest version and I don't like all of the mouth plates but I'm a big fan of this, I think it looks great. And then the uh, Ninja Warrior pack that's Ra's al Ghul and Bruce Wayne in the training gear. I like this quite a bit. And then I have the Demon Batman, which is the original, but the Scarecrow is not part of the two-pack that came with Demon Batman. That's actually the Daft Toys version. And uh, yeah, I really like how all of these look together. Down here, I have a couple more from Nolan. This is, uh, I believe, Daft Toys Alfred. And the Dark Knight Rises Gordon, which I think is an actual Hot Toys, if I remember correctly. Oh, I find one cat hair that I missed in my dusting. Sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, that is these guys. And more Nolan on the top shelf here, the next case. Um, that Joker back there is the original, I don't know, is he a DX01, something like that? And, um, I just replaced the head. It was like a, like a 30 or $40 custom head on eBay that I bought years ago. And I think it looks way better. I know nowadays they got in art and all these versions that look way better, but it was one of the first Hot Toys figures I ever bought. And... I think with the added head, still looks great in the display. Uh, Two-Face, that was the first Hot Toys figure I ever pre-ordered from Sideshow. And uh, I was kind of baffled that um, this one wasn't flying off the shelf. I was a huge fan of Two-Face in that movie. And because his identity was kept under wraps, you know, his look, there's not a lot of merch from The Dark Knight with Two-Face on it. So I was stoked to get this. And um, yeah, I... I was a little surprised that it took a while for those ones to sell through. Um, here we've got the DX-19, the newest version of Hot Toys, Dark Knight Rises, Christian Bale, as well as the original Anne Hathaway figure. I know there's a new one now that's got different hair that's uh, a bit of an upgrade from this kind of doll hair that they've got going on, but pulled back. I don't think it looks bad at all, especially in the display with everyone else. Uh, this Bane is, I believe, Daft Toy is also on a Fison body. And <laughs> long story on that one, but uh, it's a great looking figure. Really happy with it. The only thing is those boots are really hard to get on because you got to stuff the uh, pant leg down in there. So he doesn't always quite stand right. Uh, this is the uh, BBS bat that I got for a hell of a deal at, uh, I believe it was Alamo City Comic Con in San Antonio a long time ago. 
And down here is the SL Custom, I believe it's called. Ben Affleck from the Snyder Cut. Real big fan of this figure. I think it's an excellent likeness. And uh, I really like the, the wardrobe from this scene. I believe it's the one where they're getting on to the plane when Alfred picks him up after visiting Aquaman the first time. Down here we have Harley, which I believe is actually the first Hot Toys figure I ever got. Uh, she was complete everything except the baseball bat and got it for like 175 and I was like, oh sweet, I can finally afford a Hot Toys figure. And then it was all over after that. But I uh, recently got rid of the Birds of Prey one that I had sitting next to her and temporarily have moved this Nightmare Joker in its place. I believe this one was called Doomsday Reveler. I think there's two versions of this figure, and uh, that was the one I preferred. But yeah, normally I have him up on my Snyder Cut shelf, but right now I wanted to make sure there were no empty shelves for this video, so I just put these guys together and spaced things out a little differently. This is the Snyder Cut Batman Superman set. Um, absolutely in love with the way the, the Nightmare suit looks. I think this is one of my best figures. The only problem is, as you can see down there, the tip of the rifle actually snapped off. So gotta either fix or replace that. I just don't want to glue, glue it on crooked or something. Also really like the black suit Superman. I already had the original Justice League Superman, which I think looks fantastic. Uh, that bright color, at least for the figure anyway, really, really looks good and stands out on the shelf. So I thought I'd put him next to my only Wonder Woman figure because I love the Kingdom Come style golden armor. Whether or not you like that movie, I thought this was a... A great figure and an excellent likeness of Gal Gadot, especially with the helmet on. So, yeah, that's the end of the Snyderverse. Next we have the M-Toys Joker. This was one of the first, maybe the first, based on Joaquin Phoenix. And I'm hoping that we get an accompanying, whether it's Hot Toys or third party, Lady Gaga, Harley to go with it. And I was waiting to film this portion of the video because I just got Robert Pattinson's The Batman today. And I've had this Yan Toys Riddler for a minute. And I think it's a really solid third party uh, Riddler since we didn't get a legit one for some reason. But boy, they sure look good together. And I think this... Pattinson is one of Hot Toys' best. I'm really impressed with all of the uh, recent head sculpts that they've done, man. They're just getting better and better. So now we're going to jump over to the other side. As you can see, a lot of empty space right now. I have three Vitoffs on either side, and I just sold everything that was in these. It was Batmobiles and statues. And now, and uh, Apologies for some of the stuff on the glass here. I, I did a quick dusting, but I need to bust out the Windex. Um, this is uh, my very first Star Wars display. I got the Chewbacca and Han Solo set from The Force Awakens. People were really uh, critical of this figure, and I know there was a shittier early version that came out, but I'm pretty happy with this, to be honest. Um, you know, you open his mouth a little bit and put the gun in his hand and... You know, with all the accessory setup, that gap between the upper lip and the nose is not as big of a deal when you take into account the whole figure. Next, I've got Kylo Ren. This was the first one I got. This was for a total steal. It was just 150 bucks, brand new, still sealed. Great looking figure. I always loved him, especially in The Force Awakens. I wanted Kylo before we took the helmet off. You know, the Rise of Skywalker version of this figure has a very good likeness of Adam Driver, but I'm of the mind that he should have never taken the helmet off and just stayed evil. 
And this is the Han Solo that came with Chewie. He also had his blue winter coat and scarf. I was kind of on the fence about which version to use, but I went with this more traditional Han Solo look. And uh, I think the likeness is really, really good on this. And the last one here, another of my favorites. This is Rey from Rise of Skywalker and comes with Dio, the droid. And out of the various versions of Rey, again, I thought this was the most accurate. And I also just love the seamless body. If you look at the arms there, there's no joint visible, no seam at the elbow there. I really like when they do that. And the very last piece is this BB-8 from Ken Hazer. This is my very first Star Wars sketch. I've got many other pieces on order. I've got the Return of the Jedi C-3PO, the Empire Strikes Back Bespin Luke Skywalker, a Kit Bash version of Slave Leia, as well as a Last Jedi version of Leia. So lots of new figures on the way. I'm going to swap out these backdrops. Shout out to that backdrop guy on Instagram. Thank you guys for checking out the collection. It's always a work in progress, but I am happier than ever with the way that it looks today.